Alrighty, so it is 17, well, 19, 17 p.m. It is Sunday evening. This is a movie review. I got three things to review. So we got The Twilight Saga, which I watched in the past and I found a review for it. King Kong Ultimate Edition and a goofy movie. So let's do Twilight Saga. <laughs> So this is from 2017, five years ago I watched this bitch. Almost five years to the day, next month. Finished the entire Twilight Saga. <laughs> yeah, I sat through all that shit. How in the hell they made it through such cardboard dialogue, I don't know. <laughs> uh, only thing that kept me through, the only thing that kept me through it was Anna Kendrick. Truth, I swear to Christ. If she hadn't been in it, I wouldn't have enjoyed the film at all. I hate how super sappy they made it out to be. <laughs> Plus how stale everything was except for Anna. She would have been a better Bella. Yeah, she would have been a better Bella, honestly. Jesus. If I was given the chance to rewrite it, I'd make it into three films tops. Yeah. The films were so drawn out and boring that if you took the key parts of the film out, spliced it together, you'd have a better film. Truth. The only good part was the battle in Breaking Dawn Part 2, and that was ruined when I discovered it was all psychic. I was pissed. I was, I was so was like, oh, fuck yeah, violence, and then ruined. The whole concept sucked ass, but the story could have been better. One and a half out of ten. <laughs> now, okay, yeah, the movie, it's definitely from my era, like, 2000s and shit. But, like, oh my god. <clears throat> oh, Christ, it's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. But, I will say positive shit on this. Yeah, there's actually positive on this. Uh, despite all the negativity, the main positive is Anna Kendrick. And I know, it's like, oh, what's so good about Anna Kendrick? She's ugly as fuck. If Twilight hadn't taken off, like it, like it did, she wouldn't have a career today. She'd still be living in the back of her car. How do I know that? It's in her autobiography. And that's why I respect her body of work. And I have a deep... A very deep fondness for how she is and how she, you know, watching her journey through cinema. That's fun. From her debut in camp to, uh, what is that? Love Life on HBO Max. Yeah, so she's gone from movies to TV shows. And it's amazing. Like, read and listen to her audiobook or read it or whatever. It's good. Twilight, though, oh, baby, I do not like that son of a bitch. <laughs> I just, I, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 oh, hell no, uh-uh, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I won't ever watch that shit again. Did I even enjoy it, like, kind of, but not really, it just didn't really, um, resonate with me, like everybody else. And that was around, as like I said, that was my era. Like, that was four years of me out of high school. So, yeah, that was, I was in that era and shit, but nah, that wasn't my jam. It's just, ugh, no thank you, I'm good. Ugh, it's just, ugh. <laughs> it's so bad. And then I feel bad, like, going back and learning things. Like, I feel bad for Taylor, Taylor Lautner. Because him having to take his shirt off all the time, while that was a huge scream back then, that shit ruined his self-esteem for a while. That's fucked up. I was like, oh, it's so hot in here, let me take my clothes off. <laughs> like, nah. Like, that really sucks. Like, that sucks that that ruined his self-esteem and shit. Because I know how that feels. Like, I struggle with self-esteem all the goddamn time. It's hard. It's really hard. I look at myself in the mirror and it's hard to really find who I am some days. 
But yeah, uh, I still can't believe how stale Kristen Stewart was. K Stew. Ugh. <laughs> Fucking sparkles. <laughs> now, see, did I listen? Did I read the first book? Yes, I did. I listened to the first book. When it was announced they were doing it, I was so excited. And then, yeah. The only thing that got right out of that was the, what was that? Like the first, the fight in the ballet studio, I think. I think that was the only thing that got right that I saw in my head when I listened to the book. But yeah, after that, I didn't really care. I was like, fuck that. Worthless ticket. I have that ticket stub too. I saw that shit in theater. Oh god. Bella walks in the room. He acts like he's gonna blow a wad. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Ugh. <laughs> Fucking whatever. Anyway, King Kong Ultimate Edition. Easy call classic. Highly god tier film. I love the most. Finished King Kong Ultimate Edition, and it still reigns supreme as a god tier film. Yes. Oh, gosh, yes. It's one of those gems that continues to impress as the years go on. Always. Definitely one of the top seven films of the 2000s for large scale. Yes. Immensely large scale. I love a large scale film. I love large scale shit because it sucks you in and makes you want to go to that world. Easily. Peter Jackson is one of the kings for this category. Oh, yes. I'll always love this film no matter what. It's the wonder of Jackson's imagination that hooks you in so well. Fuck, if he worked on any other fandom, he'd put out a four to six hour extended cut easily. <laughs> he would. Easily. So easily. God, just everything in this movie is iconic and easy to love. From the time period to the mystery and spellbinding scale of Skull Island, Jackson knows his shit. Solid 11 out of 10. I love that. And then we got a goofy movie. <laughs> But what's my favorite part of King Kong? Easily Skull Island. I just I love everything about that shit. It's beautiful. Um, I really enjoyed just the scale of all the creatures. That was beautiful. I love the shit out of that. Like, oh my god. All that fucking scale and shit of how big they were compared to your average human. That was impressive. It was just so beautiful and mesmerizing. And it's something to really enjoy and bask in. Oh, so good. Mm -mm -mm. And I own that bitch on 4K. But HBO Max had it, so I streamed it. Because I was in the mood. And then we got a goofy movie. <laughs> I love that movie. It's such a great film and highlights... What it's like being a single father through the lens of Disney. And this is back during the dark Disney era. So there is Max who's self-conscious about uh, turning out like his dad and shit while trying to impress Roxanne. You have Goofy who is a single father trying to raise his son right and do good by him and bond with him. And then you have... Pete, who is a total dick to his kid PJ, <laughs> he's a total asshole. Like, holy fuck, what a son of a bitch. <laughs> like, that son of a bitch is retarded. Like, damn, like, he mistreats his kids so bad, it's like, wow, my life is pretty pale in comparison. <laughs> Shit, I'll live with Pete. Fuck this. <laughs> uh but you gotta love the charm with that, though. Like, there's such good charm in that. And you got his best friend and shit right by his side. Fucking beautiful. I love that. Two best friends. That's amazing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but the one, my, the standout part of that movie, of everything that's iconic, it's Kimmy. Little Kimmy. She's so goddamn adorable. She's so cute. <laughs> and then the little girl that Pete tries to get her picture taken with. That shit was funny. Like, she hopped out that diaper and ran bare ass to the store. 
<laughs> oh man, that's beautiful. But yeah, like that's an easy call classic ten, man. It's beautiful. It's so nice. And it's aged so well. That's what I love about it the most, too. Like, damn. Like, you basically got two fathers who raise their sons two different ways. One treats them like a slave. The other treats them like a piece of shit. Or no, the other one treats them good. <laughs> Suck my dick, Maxie. <laughs> oh, God. Funny. Oh, uh, so out of all these films, and Max gets the girl in the end, that's awesome as fuck. And fun fact, I've always wanted a woman that looked at me like Roxanne looks at Max. Finally got that shit. Oh my. So, out of these three, which one reigns supreme? That's a hard one. Well, Twilight can go fuck itself. But honorable mention to Anna. So... Um, I don't know. I guess King Kong, honestly, for, in terms of scale and story, definitely. Goofy movie, definitely for story and parenting and fatherhood, for single fathers and stuff. Um... And kind of like broken home life in a sense, I guess. Because where's Max's mom at? That's that's like one question in both. Where the fuck's his mom? <laughs> what happened to Pete's mom? Or wife? Duh. But where's his mom to? <laughs> <coughs> I don't know. I guess I gotta watch Goof Troop and find out. I don't know if it's even in Goof Troop. I haven't watched Goof Troop in fucking decades. Jesus Christ, that fucker's gonna be 30 years old in two years. 30. Because it came out in 94, I think. Yeah, nine, yeah 94. Getting old. Hey, old. I hate it. <laughs> so, Kong, Goofy Movie, Twilight. There you go. So, if you don't like teen phenomenon films these are not for you if you don't like king kong this is not for you if you don't like disney flicks this is not for you if you enjoy all that shit it's definitely for you i know my ex-friend's ex-wife would watch twilight when she was on her period fucking rice burner but yeah she used to watch that shit when she was on her period because it would make her feel better I'm like, okay. <laughs> Whatever works for you. If I was on my period, I wouldn't want to watch Twilight. <laughs> like, I'm bleeding harder because of this fucking movie. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, uh <sighs> Fucking Twilight. The worst part about that is the hand-holding dialogue. That shit irritated the hell out of me. Like, oh, God. So horrible. Ugh. It's just so bad. But then when you sum the whole saga up, it's literally about a master ball liquor, a master of hickeys, and a master anorexic all trying to get along. <laughs> Me, I'm Team Bella, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm Team Bella. Definitely Team Bella. You got Team Jacob, Team Edward. Fuck them, motherfuckers. Ugh. Fuck them, some bitches. Don't care about them. No, thank you. So, if you don't like fantasy, if you don't like family films, if you don't like adventures, not for you. If you hate the directors, the cast, the crew, all that jazz, eh, it's not for you. If you love all that, it's for you. Where can you find all this junk? King Kong's on HBO Max. Goofy Movies on Disney+. Plus. Twilight Saga is probably on where the fuck ever. I don't even know. Ugh. I don't know. Go find it on a pirated website or rent it from your library. I don't fucking care. It's whatever. Maybe you get off to that shit. I don't fucking know. God. Although when I was watching King Kong this morning, I heard, I thought about that. And I was like, man, it'd be cool if Idris Elba 
was narrating his Kong's emotions. Just that gentle narrating, like Morgan Friedman does. Like, I would love to have had that. That would have been so cool. I don't know. It's just, I listen to so many narrators and so many voices in film and show. It's like, I pick one voice and it's like, oh, that's perfect for that. But it'll never happen. But if you think that's racist in some way, you need to grow the fuck up. It's not about that. So, I'm going to get off here, upload this fucking thing, and go watch some TV. Till next time, like and subscribe for thoughts and prayers.